got to get more disciplined and we have to stand together and we have to know that there are no limits to which because the ideas that we are fighting for are very humanitarian. And sometimes we get caught up in the fact that we want Medicare for all and we want to drive down the cost of pharmaceutical drugs. And we believe that uh, student debt should be canceled and people should have paid family leave, et cetera, et cetera. Fill in your blank. Sometimes we let those high minded ideas cloud us to the enemy that is in front of us. And the status quo will do something to their own mama, I believe, if it has to do with trying to defeat not just progressive individuals that run like myself and like an India, like a Senator Sanders, you name it. But what they are trying to do is to crush the spirit of our movement. And we cannot allow that. Yeah, I think that and that is one of, to me, the key things about labor, because you can go to a union hall and their political affiliation is irrelevant in that. That's moment. right. They're, that's they're right. workers. And, and ultimately, that's what we need to be focused on, because the economic stuff, the justice issues are so much more important than the nonsense that they're trying to distract us with. And yeah. I just I, I feel like it's incumbent upon us to keep reminding people not to be distracted by this ridiculous partisan theater, but to understand that there are issues that we all need to just be stand firm on. And I just think that labor is that is that thing, yep. is that coalition. I That's what they showed us last year. That was the example I was using, just what you hit on. That is it. They came yeah. together. Political affiliation didn't matter in that moment. It was we are union members, brothers and sisters, family and friends, fighting for better wages, work conditions, and benefits. And we got a common enemy and a common cause. And we're going to put all that other nonsense aside. And I think that that speaks um, very directly to one of the biggest issues that we saw, you know, during your race, especially in the home stretch, which is the worst time to have, you know, the sort of this dissension, if you will. You already have enough with the millions of dollars in the horrific ads that they were playing, uh, the billboard we remember that we saw oh, when we were in Cleveland, uh, you know, calling you an anti Semite and all that stuff. Uh, but then you have the other part of the equation, which is a sort of nihilistic movement with the online left that thinks that you can never do enough. I mean, I try to tell people you invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in a television ad in the Cleveland metro area saying that you support Medicare for all. And yet it wasn't enough that you did that. It's like, no, you have to come here and do this and that. And I'm just thinking there's too much of this. There's this huge problem on the left where there's this idea that I would rather be right than be effective. And that is something that you, I, I say this to anybody who's going to see this interview, and we know a lot of you will. So think about what that means in terms of what you want to accomplish going forward. If you have any aspirations of Medicare for all, a living wage, ending the wars, a Green New Deal, then you're going to have to swallow your pride in some instances and recognize that it's not, you're not going to get everything you want at once, but so long as the person in question is fighting on the side of workers and not corporate special interests, Come on. that is the winning play, period. And I'm curious if, if you have any thoughts on that, because that was something nope. that really set us no, off. No, I'm so sick of the purists. I'm so sick of them, the overwoke yeah. damn purists. Like, if you don't agree with me, you say one thing, and then I'm going to keep bringing... These are people that are bitter. They decide they don't like you, and then they use everything to work backwards from their conclusion, and they will find every little nitpicky thing. That's not on my team. Like, you're not working on our team. Well, you're, not not, in, well, you're not seeking progress. Well, to be fair, they're not on our team right now. That doesn't mean they could That's ultimately true. be. That's a, you're, you're displaying right, yeah. behavior that is not team-like. Mm -hmm. Well, That's I'm saying it. amen to what both of you are saying. I want to leap out of my seat right now. I think some people want to be professional, just just. They just want to complain. They don't want the solution to come. Let me say that because there's nothing wrong with complaining when things are wrong. But some people don't ever want the real solution to happen because then what else are they going to do? They won't have anything else to do. And you're right. I said it till I was blue in the face. I want people to have health, universal health care, Medicare for all in these United States of America, no pain at the point of service. We are all in this together, period. That's it. I mean, what else you want me to say? And I've been fighting for this for a very long time and supported the candidate that actually got the 21st century version of the progressive movement party started. What else y'all want a sister to do? You know, it's insane. So 
listen, we, we never going to always 100% agree with anybody, even if we admire that person or agree with their politics, that's fine. If the prerequisite for a relationship is 100% agreement all the time, then we don't have much of a relationship. And I ain't got time for those kind of people. You do you, and I'm going to do me, which is to continue to use my voice and my platform and everything that I believe the creator has given me to try to be and do some good in this world. Period. Yeah. You know what? Va and, and people hate me for liking Vosh, but one of the things he makes a very big point about is that people have this tendency to conflate our political connections and our political coalition with our personal. OK, come on. I don't need to like everybody. That's I can right. actually work with people I don't like. I might even find them. Eh, but that doesn't mean that we're not trying to get to the same goal. Maybe I wouldn't hang out with them in real life. It really doesn't matter, people. And this is a problem I find on the left. They very much have to like people. It's about their feelings. And mm -hmm. the, I don't see that as much on the right. And I have no doubt that when you did your uh, podcast with uh, with former Governor Kasich, that he probably uh, the, the people on the right weren't like, oh, my God, how dare you talk to Nina Turner? Public. I wonder what Nina Turner has to say. I'm curious as to what she stands for. And I'm wondering if there might be anything that I might they didn't agree cancel with. him. No. And That's so right. that, that is the whole, you know, this is the growth period that I think we as as a movement, if we're going to have a sustainable movement that we we're all it. going to have to get to is. Can I stay? I just want to stay there right for a minute because I ignored all those fools and I'm calling them that. Yeah. You know what? I served in the Ohio Senate. Senator Nina Turner, while Governor John Kasich was the governor. And guess what? We didn't agree 99% of the time. But when a young boy was shot on the playground, Tamir Rice in You're Cleveland, right. Ohio, and I called that governor, we talked to one another. He was like, Senator, what is happening there? I said, Governor, people are mad as hell. And we, we, yes, we have to do something. Did I give a damn whether or not we agreed on abortion rights and all that other stuff at that moment? No. What I cared about is making sure that my city did not erupt because people are sick and tired of police brutality when it happens. That's it. And I set aside all the things, and so did he, that we didn't agree with and said, what can we come together and do with these fancy titles we have to make a difference? And you know what? Even though that was light years ago, 2014, Tamir Rice was shot down two less than two seconds of the police arriving on the scene, a 12-year-old black boy. In 2014, the latter part of 2014 and the 2015, Governor John Kasich and I worked side by side. And you know what? He made this flaming progressive freedom fighter one of the co-chairs of his task force on community and police relations. And we got some things done, period. And yeah. I don't care who likes it. That is the story. That is the truth. He could have said, you know, Nina Turner, she done gave me hell all the time she'd been in the Senate. I'm not. I'm not partnering with her. No, not only did he listen to me and partner with me, he made me a co-chair along with his, um, the director of public safety, John Bourne. So don't tell me what cannot be done when people put aside differences. Now we can come back and fight on abortion rights or voting rights or all the other things we disagreed on. But in this moment right here, we are going to do some good and try to ch make some changes in this state. And that's what we did, y'all. So yeah, yeah, did I get a whole bunch of grief and hate it? How dare she? And she ain't progressive enough and she done sold out. Hey, I know this is a, a, a PG-13. No, show. it's okay. We're... But, but, but F them, okay? Because yeah. see, I ain't got time for that nonsense and when that, I'm trying to do some and good. Gentlemen, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is as close as you will ever get to Nina Turner dropping an F-bomb. So that <laughs> is pretty damn good. And I've that, heard it. I've heard it in private. And we've said. But, yes. But it, yes. Yes, I have. But but it's, um yeah. But do you but, both agree with me? Like, we got too many course. issues to solve to, to deal with that pettiness. I, I, I've so. said many a times, and I will continue to say, that progressives and libertarians have a lot more in common than they're willing to admit, especially when it comes to war, when it comes to civil liberties, hell, even when it comes to health care, once they finally understand, because the one thing you can you agree with libertarians are, they are fanatical about not wasting money. And what would be more useful of our money if we remove the for-profit middlemen in between us and our doctors? Right, libertarians Come can on. generally be reasoned with. Yes, 100%. 
and recognizing who is actually going to be part of this non-corporate coalition is Come going on. to be people that are not going to agree with you know, whether or not you use pronouns, for example. This is not a world we're going to live in where you can uh, you know, think that wrapping yourself in bubble paper is going to be something that can sustain itself in closed circles, maybe. But in reality, that is not how the real world works. Sam Cedar did say it best on our podcast. The online left really doesn't understand how small their world is. And they have this misconception that the way things are on Twitter, for example, is the way things are in the real They're world. De- they have delusions of grandeur of themselves. That if you go and talk to somebody who is living in, 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 a, in a plighted area in Akron, they don't give a damn about what some person is arguing about on Twitter. They care about That's the fact right. that their water is not safe. They care about mm. the fact that their jobs don't pay enough, that they don't have health care, and their opportunities are somewhat limited, if at all. And to me, that's the message that if it gets out there enough the way that it should, I mean, you're the best of us. You've always been the best of us. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.